Okay, so here we are tonight at another Vicky event on this uh, Wednesday evening. And tonight we're gonna be talking about the current crisis that we're having in our country, along with many other crises. And we have with us Jared Carter, a professor at Vermont Law School to speak about impeachment. I thought, I think we've discussed that before. So I believe that tonight um, is a time when we should discuss whether or not it's constitutional to impeach a prior president. Um, and so here's Jared to speak about both sides, I think, of the argument, right, Jared? So yeah, yes, yeah, so I'm going to talk. I guess, yeah, thanks. I'm happy to happy to talk about that. Um, my plan is to spend 10, 15 minutes max, sort of laying out the, the argument, because at this point we've seen the opening briefs, if you will, by both the uh, House prosecutors, for lack of a better word, and the and Trump's defense attorneys. And so we have a pretty good idea of what they are going to be arguing, uh, at least in sort of their, their arguments. Okay, um, but Gary, can I interrupt you for a minute? Which are includes the, the constitutional issue, yeah. But are the defense briefs out, really? Yeah, they're opening. I'm not sure if all, I, there's an opening sort of statement, maybe it's a brief um, that I've seen. Um, uh, so yes, I believe so. And who are his attorneys? Anybody that you know? No, nobody I knew. I know that there was some, uh, as there always is, controversy over the weekend because five, the original five attorneys right. decided for some reason, uh, and all we, all we get is the rumor mill, but for some reason to leave. Right. And so the, the, there's two new ones, um, and I forget their names. I think they're from South Carolina, um, but they'll be defending, defending the president um, won't be graced with Rudolph Giuliani's presence. Grazie, it's adios. But but uh, oh, yes, he's got two, two I defense think he's lawyers. Pretty funny. I like. I enjoy him actually. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, so yeah, I, I don't want to spend too much time talking about the process of impeachment generally because we've kind of already done that and really just sort of try to break down as best as I can the two different arguments that are being made um, and then happy to just sort of have a discussion about it. Uh, so the main arguments uh, and sort of where they where they 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 match up. Uh, the the president uh, or former President Trump uh, is arguing one one key point that his speech. That, so maybe I'll back up actually. So the the articles of impeachment that were delivered were essentially tracking uh, the the couple of months after the November sixth election, um, and they they provide some quotes and some context. Uh, of things that the president tweeted, phone calls that he had with the Secretary of State in Georgia, and then ultimately the big one, obviously the January 6th speech, and then subsequent um, attack on the Capitol uh, uh, by folks that were at that speech. And so uh, that those are essentially the underlying facts uh, that, the, that the Senate's gonna be looking at. And what the president appears to be arguing, and I think these are the two main issues that we're going to see crop up in the impeachment, are number one, uh, that his speech was protected by the First Amendment. Uh, and so you, you might recall, of course, that the First Amendment protects the freedom of speech. Uh, and uh, under our constitutional regime, uh, it protects even speech that is hateful. It protects uh, so-called fighting words. Uh, it, very, it is very, very broad in its protections. Uh, and so uh, the president is arguing that even his speech in uh, on January 6th, and the article's impeachment provides some quotes, uh, I think the one that probably everybody has heard about, uh, where the president says we need to, or former President Trump says, we need to fight like hell, uh, and I'll see you at the Capitol. Um, so those are included in the article's impeachment, and then obviously, well, some people fought like hell and uh, uh, law enforcement officers were killed. Uh, others, others were injured um, in what was, to my mind, quite frankly, one of the most tragic, certainly, no, it's, it's the most tragic thing I've seen in my lifetime in this country. 9-11 uh, was horrible, of course, uh, but I, I just, I never thought I would see that happen. Uh, but irregardless of that, the president's first assertion is that his speech was protected by the First Amendment. So here's the test that courts apply uh, under the First Amendment. And as I said, it's a very high bar. 
uh, to, 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 to get over because we value freedom of speech in this country, even ugly, horrible speech. The test is this, and it comes from a case, Brandenburg versus the state of Ohio. And in that case, uh, that case actually dealt with uh, the KKK um, and things that they were saying and doing uh, in Ohio at the time. And the, the court ultimately said that the KKK speech was protected and they came up with this test uh, to determine whether or not speech is protected by the First Amendment. Here's the test. And I think this is at the heart of certainly one of the arguments that the president and the House prosecutors are going to be arguing over in front of the Senate. The test is that speech, even advocacy of force, is protected as long as the speech, and I'm, I'm quoting here, in fact, I could drop it in the chat box so people could see it. Um, I think that works. Uh, unless this, the advocacy is directed to inciting or producing imminent lawless action and is likely to incite or produce such lawless action. Um, so uh, so that's, the, that's the test that under the First Amendment is going to be looked at. Um, and my reading of it and the case law is, I think we can pretty quickly do away with the second part of that test, the second half of that sentence, because clearly unlawful action occurred. So I don't think there's, they're gonna be debating much over whether or not the actions that occurred, the storming of the Capitol, the deaths, the injuries, that that was an unlawful action. I think where the rubber is gonna meet the road uh, and it's gonna be up to the Senate to decide uh, by vote is whether or not the president, uh, the, whether or not the president directed the speech or directed the advocacy at inciting that imminent lawless action. And as part of that, courts usually look at intent. Uh, and, and, and so you're, you're trying to read uh, often circumstantial evidence uh, to determine what was the speaker's intent. Uh, and obviously on the, the, the Democrats side or the house manager's side, they, they point to the, the lead up to that, uh, Trump's claims about election fraud and, uh, and you know, I'll see you at the Capitol and we got to fight like hell. I think the, the, the president's lawyers on the other hand are arguing, you know, who doesn't say we got to fight like hell in a campaign speech or in a, in a political speech. Uh, and that the, the speech is there for protected. Um, intent is hard to prove. I mean, that's why you don't have many prosecutions for incitement. Uh, intent is a hard element to prove in any crime uh, because you kind of got to get inside someone's head. Uh, and so you're using circumstantial evidence, outside evidence, to try to show what they were thinking when they, uh, when they said what they said. Um, so, I mean, so this is the reason, for example, uh, that uh, Al Capone, we on he only got prosecuted for tax evasion uh, because he was very careful in the way he, you know, he wouldn't say, hey, go, you know, shoot that person. He'd say, I don't really want to see that person anymore. Uh, and so it was very hard thereby to prove his intent to, to imminent lawless action or his intent uh, to uh, encourage a crime of violence, which is the other statute that's in play here. So it's a very high bar and I think that's but I think that's where the argument's going to be. Here's an important point. Normally if it's a criminal trial, mm, right. people would think of this and say, well, you know, have they proved each element, so to speak, each piece of this beyond a reasonable doubt, right? So that it's almost a legal certainty. Uh, that's not the standard in the impeachment. So right. while the bar is very high, remember, an impeachment as the founders said is a political process. It's, it, if you want to call it this, it's a political trial. That's why the punishments are only political. So an impeachment, the punishment can't be jail, it can't be a fine, it's disqualification, removal from office. Uh, and so they're political punishments. Uh, and so that's why I think um, really in the end, it's not gonna be a court deciding, you know, did the president, was the president's speech viol protected by the first amendment under this Brandenburg test uh, or was it uh, actually a violation of the incitement to commit uh, uh, violent crime statutes that exist at the federal level? The answer is, it's whatever 67 senators think it is. Um, and, and so I think that's an important point to make. But that's the legal argument that I think we're likely to see play out under that First Amendment uh, debate, right? Whether the president's speech was protected by the First Amendment. 
So that's number one. Uh, Can I interrupt you? But, yeah, it, sure. but it probably, as a citizen of the United States, it would be protected free. But what you're saying, mm -hmm. for instance, if it was a criminal trial with a jury, it yeah. would be protected speech. Well, but you'd have the lawyers making the same arguments. Yeah. Right. Uh, and, and I think so. I'll, I can get a little bit more into the weeds if you want. The, the, the House managers, that, that point comes up, right? Uh, this idea that the president if he is a private citizen, it's his protected right. speech. Uh, the counter to that is, uh, again, this idea that he's not being charged with any crime. Right, exactly. Uh, right. Where, whereas normally a private citizen would be charged with a crime of inciting violence, their defense would be First Amendment, my speech is protected. Here the president isn't being charged with any crime in the impeachment. Uh, and the arguments that that's made, and you guys can decide whether you think it's a good argument or not, but the argument that's made is that uh, in order to be impeached, you don't actually have to commit a crime. And so the president's speech, even if it maybe is protected by the First Amendment, still violates that oath of office. Uh, it's a, it's, and, and, and that gets back to this idea of the, of the impeachment being one of, of a political trial, not a criminal right. trial. Right. Uh, and, and so that's the argument that's made. So that's the First Amendment. The other one, and this one Sandy alluded to at the outset that I think we're going to see probably, well, my sense is this is where, it's, what, where, it, where it's, what it's really going to come down to. Yeah. Um, yeah right. Whether or not the Senate retains jurisdiction, in other words, the authority over the trial in light of the fact that uh, obviously President Trump is former President Trump now. Um, and the, the, the argument that's made by the defense team, by Trump's defense team, I think is what we're starting to see it shape up, is essentially that impeachment and the trial, the conviction, by the language of the Constitution, applies to presidents, vice presidents, and other federal officials. And so since President Trump is no longer a president, vice president, or federal official, the Senate essentially has no jurisdiction over this. The president's now a private citizen. If he committed a crime, he could be prosecuted in a criminal court, but that the Senate has no jurisdiction over him for the purposes of impeachment. Uh, so that's the, that's the president's argument. The flip side, and what the House managers are arguing, uh, is that um, they do have, it does have jurisdiction, and they point to another section of the impeachment language uh, that says the Senate shall have the sole power to try all impeachments. Uh, and their argument is that mm -hmm. since the impeachment happened when he was president, and since the Constitution says they have the so they have the sole authority to try all impeachments, mm -hmm. that they retain that jurisdiction. And they uh, also point to the um, 1870s, which even this is a little bit of a of a you know again we're in legally mucky muddy waters here. But they point to an example in the 1870s when a Secretary of War, and maybe you've read or heard about this, a Secretary of War. I think it's William Bellcamp, right. 1876. Uh, he realized he was about to be impeached in the House, and he very quickly tendered his resignation uh, uh, before he was impeached. The House continued its impeachment, even though he was technically no longer the Secretary of War. The Senate tried him. Uh, the same arguments were made that he they no longer had jurisdiction. He was ultimately acquitted in the Senate. Uh, so in some ways that pr provides a historical precedent. In some ways it, it doesn't. doesn't. Yeah. Uh, and so I think I think it's 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 muddy waters. But here's what I'd say, and I'll I'll sort of close here um, and let people chime in with questions or comments or thoughts. Um, it's muddy waters, but in the end, it, it's a political process, and it is going to come down to what the Senate votes. Uh, and I think that's that's borne out um, by the fact that the U.S. Supreme Court, normally, right, when someone's rights are violated or or they're prosecuted for something, right, you appeal and ultimately could end up in the U.S. Supreme Court and they would, they would decide whether your rights were violated and either reverse your conviction or not. Interestingly, because of this history of impeachment as a political process, the U.S. Supreme Court has very, has, there's very few instances uh, uh, where the U.S. Supreme Court has gotten involved at all in reviewing an impeachment. Mm -hmm. and the, the, the key one, in fact, I think it might even be the only one, 
uh, is uh, uh, Nixon v. the United States, and it's not uh, it's not Richard, it's Walter. Uh, no relation, but Walter Nixon was a federal judge and he was impeached for improprieties and he was uh, 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 convicted and he appealed on a bunch of different grounds. And the US Supreme Court said, we will not review this case under a doctrine called the non-justiciability doctrine. Essentially, uh, the Supreme Court said, this is a political question and the Constitution reserves impeachments exclusively to the Senate to decide what their trials look like. And therefore, because it's explicitly given to the Senate, it's not the Supreme Court's role to get in and decide whether the trial was constitutional, whether the trial was properly carried out. Um, so I think whatever happens, it's gonna come down to the politics of the Senate, the votes of the Senate, and the Supreme Court isn't gonna touch it with a 10 foot pole and I think that's further buttressed by the fact that Chief Justice yeah. Roberts is not presiding, right. uh, primarily, I think, because he doesn't have to, and the Supreme Court would rather stay out of the politics, which I think is a good thing. Yeah. Um, and that's why Senator Leahy, our senator, is, is the pres presiding officer here, because under the Constitution, uh, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court only presides if the president or vice president is being impeached. And since he is no longer the president, uh, the, the, there's not a requirement that Chief Justice Roberts does it. And my guess is he decided he doesn't want to do it because he's, I think, rightfully so, trying to maintain the, the courts as a nonpartisan as possible uh, uh, stature. So that's why Senator Leahy's involved. Uh, but in the end, President Trump will be, it will be constitutional if 67 senators say it is and vote to convict. It will be unconstitutional if uh, what's the math? My math is bad. 34 senators, because we've got 100, say it's unconstitutional and we are not going to convict. Yeah, but, but they're not going to say that, are they? They'll say whether he's convicted or not. Correct? Correct. So it, the upshot of it is they'll make their arguments. Right. And if, if they're depending on how the who's convinced by which argument, yeah. I sort of laid out the summaries of both sides, the vote will happen. Um, and you know, depending which way it goes, I suppose there could be, there may very well be appeals to the federal courts and maybe the US Supreme Court, but based on that Nixon case, I think the Supreme Court's unlikely to get involved. Um, and that may sound odd and weird, but it's consistent with yeah. uh, the founders' um, perspective on, on what they, and how an impeachment should play off, play out. Right. Okay. Well, I have a question. Um, if, if there, if Trump's team is um, kind of basing their whole thing on the fact that he's no longer president, so therefore he can't be impeached, uh, and that they that uh, well, just quickly, he, shout, Lou, 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 he has been impeached. Yeah, he has been impeached. So right, he has he been has impeached. Been what, impeached. What, what's Sorry. happening now is the trial in the, the Senate. Trial. I think people, yes. we do. We always, and I probably did it too. We blend them Wrong together. Language. They're actually very different legal processes. <laughs> right, and and that and that the. Uh, the question of him, his role is in inciting this whole thing. Mm -hmm. Does it matter? I, I mean, in my mind, his incitement happened while he was in president, as well as mm -hmm. you know the statement that he made at that thing. Does that have any yeah. relevance in this sort of? I mean, yeah. So, so great question. Uh, lawyers always want to rely on case law before they give an answer, uh, and there just isn't case law on this point. But I think here's the argument on both sides. The, the, the House managers are going to say absolutely that matters. He was impeached when he was a sitting president. And, it, and it's true. If you look at the language of the Constitution, it says the Senate shall have sole authority to try all impeachments. There's no, uh, uh, there's no caveat to that. Um, on the other hand, there's also language in the Constitution that says the pres that the, the president, vice president, and other federal officials are those who may be impeached and convicted. So uh, it's, it's, it's legally murky, but those are the arguments that are going to be made. And I, I, you know, the house managers have already made that, that argument that because it happened when he was the president, because he was impeached while he was still the president, uh, the Senate mm -hmm. has the authority to, to, to hear this case. Look, I think the Senate's going to hear the case. Um, uh, this isn't, there, there isn't, um, like a mechanism the way there is in a court where you can get them, you have a motion to dismiss. I thought there um, was the, one already. Was there? Well, there was sort of. Rand Paul 
made a motion to consider whether or not it was constitutional or not. Uh, that motion failed. Right. So, so a lot of people say, well, that means 45 Republicans are, you know, there's no way they're going to get a conviction. I think that's an oversimplification because what was up for a vote with Rand Paul was not actually whether or not it was constitutional or not. His motion was whether we should even debate that topic. Right. Um, and so, so I, I think, you know, it's going to be interesting to see. I think there's at least five senators on the Republican side um, the, that seem um, like they've already decided. Uh, Which way? I think the Democrats have. What? Which way? Which the well, five so are... Romney, Sass, Murkowski, oh, yeah, yeah. Collins, uh, and a missing one. Murkowski? Murkowski? Murkowski, I think I think I said her. But yeah, I think there's four or five. Um, so if you, you, know, you do the math, you've got 50 Democrats, assume they all go convict five Republicans right now. Uh, you know, it's still, there's, there's, there'd have to be 12 others because it's got to be 67. Um, and I think at this point, it's unclear whether that, that those numbers are there or not. Uh, but I, I, mean, I think it is interesting, and maybe I can just quickly touch on this, uh, having Senator Leahy uh, yeah. at the table, there's another interesting aside. So obviously, Senator Leahy being our, our senior senator, um, the Senate parliamentarian, uh, is a Vermont law school grad. Uh, oh. And so she's the one that actually helps Senator Leahy because he doesn't really know about the Senate rules probably. Uh, it's the parliamentarians who are the, are sort of the pros. And so she's the par Senate parliamentarian. So she'll be helping Senator Leahy decide in terms of ruling on motions um, or ruling on what evidence should be coming in or what, uh, who could be subpoenaed. Uh, she'll be helping him in that process. I think Sally, you have a question, right, Sally? You gotta unmute. You're you're, you're muted. Sorry. Uh, it seems like one sticky wicket is, is that the uh, the Trump it disagrees with his attorneys about what the argument should be. That and would prove, yeah. And he wants it to be that he's the legitimately uh, that the the, the 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 election was stolen and he's legitimately the president. Yeah. And the attorneys are saying we can't argue that because it's not true. I know. I thought they had given it up. The new team. I think he agreed with mm -hmm. the new team that he would not make that argument. That's what I saw today. Yeah. Yeah. So Sally, you're right. I think. Um, and I, that is my understanding as well as, as what Sandy said. So the five that left, the, again, I said it was sort of the rumor mill, but you know, it's these the sources that support the news media to write these articles said that the reason they left was because the president was still pushing the argument should be election fraud, and they didn't think that they could make that in, in compliant with their ethical obligations as lawyers, and so they left. Okay. Uh, now another, these two have come on and appeared not to be making that argument. Right. Another reason, another reason they left is because uh, Trump is so so much of a tightwad. He didn't want to pay the bills. They told him it was going to be a million three or, or or a million eight, and he said, "No, that's too much. I won't do it." So really, I hadn't, I hadn't uh, seen that. That's fascinating. Did, yeah. But who? So how much is he paying the new team? Nothing, probably. He never pays his bills. He still owes Burlington eighty five hundred dollars. Well, yeah, he could, he, if he paid it, he could he could probably offset that as a loss and never pay income yeah, taxes exactly, for the rest of his life. Exactly. I'm sure that, they're that's, not that's doing it for free. I heard that. Yeah. I'm okay. sure they're not doing it for free. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, jo well, jo yeah. Joanne made the observation that if he claims he's president, well, then they can uh, convict or have the trial because he, <laughs> he thinks he's still president. It becomes <laughs> circular. Yeah, yeah, not yeah, it's a circular <laughs> argument. Yeah, yeah. I think the House managers should say, well, this man thinks he's president, so of course he should be tried. Yeah. Or no, committed to a mental institution. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have something else interesting, and maybe you've seen this as well, but some of the folks who are being um, charged with crimes on, uh, from January 6th are using as their defense that they weren't trespassing because they were invitees, that the okay. president invited them. Uh, to, to, to come into the Capitol, which I think is another sort of interesting legal twist, because one defense to a charge of trespass is that you were actually invited. Uh, you were an yeah, invitee. But, 
but if, as an attorney, the counter argument to that would be that the president has no control over the Capitol building, right? That Probably, house yeah. is managed by Nancy Pelosi. And a separate right. Right. Yeah, and a set, right, right. Yeah, 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 pro probably. Yeah. Don't know that. <laughs> but, the, the, you know, the, I think one of the strategy could be, you know, you throw up as many roadblocks and hope for yeah, some sort of course. deal. Yeah. yeah, right. Like in any other case, that's what right. you do with lawyers, mm -hmm. you, right? Right. Yeah, other, other questions or comments. I'm trying to think if there's any sort of other interesting tidbits that I could share, but. Um... Well, Jared, do you, do you have any, any sense of how this might play out in, in fact, like, do you think that they, yeah. that he, they might successfully convict him or whatever the term is? Yeah, I mean, I don't have any inside inside line on it. Um, I mean, I think getting twelve more Republicans to go along, if you start sort of going through who are who are who are the possibilities, I think it's going to be pretty pretty tough. Uh, uh, and um, uh, you know, not not that I don't. I mean, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm not arguing you shouldn't be impeached, but I do think it's going to be tough to get twelve more. I don't know who you who else you flip. On the other hand, mo a lot of them are being playing it pretty close to their chests. Right. And while there was that motion and 45 Republicans said this is unconstitutional, or that they, they said we should at least debate the constitutionality, I think a lot of the news media is, is overplaying that and saying that means that 45 said you shouldn't convict uh, when it really, that wasn't the vote. The vote was, should we debate whether or not it's constitutional, right? So these are those Senate rules where they, they vote about, you know, what, what are they, Robert's rules, right? Where you gotta, you gotta have a motion and then you vote about whether to debate the, the topic. And so that, that thing that the, the media is talking about is, well, hey, 45 Republicans said it's unconstitutional. That, that's not true. They, they said, 45 Republicans said we should debate that. So I don't think you can sort of carry that over and, and say, therefore there's 45 Republicans uh, who are not gonna support impeachment. Um, and therefore, there's no chance at conviction. Uh, but I do think it's going to be an uphill uphill battle to, 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 to flip uh, 12 of them. It'll be, I mean, Mitch McConnell was vocal for a while. He seems to be a little quieter now. Um, I'm not sure what to make of that. Um, because a lot of times you'll see, um, and, and this happened during the, you know, in the, after, the, after the riots, the insurrection, whatever you want to call it, um, uh, Mitch McConnell was quite vocal, and that gave cover to other senators to sort of feel like they could speak more uh, freely about, you know, what the, what their concerns. But there's, I think there's a big, I think there's a big rift right now in the, I mean, probably in both parties, but I think it's more it's more obvious right now in the Republican Party, um, you know, about how to proceed here. Um, and there's a, certainly a wing, and I don't know if it's 12 more of them that. Uh, want to be done with Trump and move on and, and, you know, I guess they call it go back to being the old Republican Party or whatever. And there's a there's a wing that that, uh, you know, still supports President Trump. Um, I heard it was 80 20 for for Trump. Hey, 80 in, in the Republican Party. percent. No, in the Republican caucus, you mean within the Senate, you mean 80 20? The party. Oh, oh yeah. 80%. 80%. Yeah. Right. yeah. I saw, I mean, you, you got, there's, there's, I, I saw another poll today that, in, that said 31% um, of Republicans thought he should be convicted. So that means, you know, presumably a, a, a super majority or at least a large majority thinks he shouldn't be. So yeah. to the extent that translates into the Senate. But remember that the Senate is set up different than the House. So senators are six-year terms, and the theory there is that gives them a little bit more independence, uh, you know, uh, and, and not necessarily them, having to follow the popular yeah. will the way the House does. Who's elected every year? I think Susan Susan had a question, right, Susan, or not? Tim yeah, does. I mean, it strikes me that none of it has that it all has particular relevance, I suppose, for Trump himself. But as a society, <clears throat> the only piece that I'm interested in is whether they include a statement about not ever running again. It's like a sentence. But Tim had something to say. Can yeah, you? I was going to say that he can only be um, prohibited from ever holding office again if he is convicted. Right. 
That's true. Yeah, yeah. So, is so, so that a separate vote? Is that so a there's debate about that too, Tim. Good, good, good. Um, and this gets to, to Susan's point as well, I think. So in the articles of impeachment, uh, and this is a bit different, but the House can do whatever it wants, I suppose, with, with the articles of impeachment, they included reference to the 14th Amendment, right. uh, which allows for disqualification of somebody who engages in rebellion or insurrection against the United States. Now that was passed, as we're going to talk about, I guess, in a couple of weeks or months after the Civil War. Uh, and so the fact that the House included that draws into question whether or not it would actually take two votes. In other words, if the Senate voted to convict based on those articles of impeachment, some argue that that means since it's included in the article of impeachment, it would automatically mean he's disqualified. Others say it would take a second vote oh. to, to do that. But I think that's that's a that's an unknown. Uh, another interesting thing, and, and maybe this will put but make people you know, not be able to sleep at night, or some people here not be able to sleep at night. The, the Constitution, the disqualification uh, is only for holding federal office. So there, there's nothing they could do to stop President Trump from deciding, hey, I'm running again anyway. Oh, you can imagine a, real, a pretty big mess uh, if he decided to run. So what, it would be still fun. Uh, for office, uh, even though he couldn't actually hold it. Um, and he has raised, uh, tens of millions of dollars with his Stop the Steal campaign over the past three months. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, I still get the emails. Do you uh, get emails from his campaign, Jared? Sure. Yeah, so yeah. Do I. yeah, yeah. No, I, I've, I've had vicarious liability because I'll get sometimes his son sends them out. Yeah, and I, I love, I'm sure nobody reads it, but I love hitting reply, you know, and say, you know, go F yourself. Or, you know, they start the email saying, Dear friend, please contribute. And I, I'll just reply back. I'll just say, we're not friends. Then um, why do you I mean, bother to get him? Why don't you just delete this feeling that they're actually paying attention yeah. and getting these emails. Yeah, I get them too, actually. I just read them. I don't do anything. So, so that's an interesting, I mean, and, and then you could even go a step further. And this is really crazy. If you think about it, each state has the, the authority to manage its own elections, as we've seen in this election and previous. So they have their own election laws. And so to the extent that there's states uh, in which Trump still is very popular within the Republican Party, um, what would, would they, would there, would, what, there could potentially be no prohibition about actually putting him on the ballot uh, in those states, because again, it's, you can't hold office. And I, so I don't wanna say these things too loud because I don't, I don't wanna give that guy any ideas, uh, but, but a plain re reading of the constitution and the law seems to impl indicate that that could be a possibility. And we do know that uh, Trump likes to do things to, you know, mix but it to, up and put it- to go, back, to go back to the Republican party, a third of the senators are up for reelection in, uh, in 2022. And all of them are running scared because Trump still holds such sway among the base that they don't want to be primaried. So they're not going to have the courage, even mm -hmm. if they think that he should be convicted to convict him. And they'll yeah. weasel out of it by saying, well, you know, he's out of office. So, and a question, um, can, when, when a senator renders his or her vote, do they give an explanation or do they say they either to. yes or no? They don't, they don't have, have to. to. Uh, they often do, uh, but they, they don't allowed? have to. They can. They are allowed to? Yep. Because then the talking point will be, the reason I am voting not to convict is because this is just unconstitutional. We shouldn't be even doing this. You I want. think that's what we'll hear they, from, they from a not, lot of them. will not react to the evidence presented at trial. Well, I was gonna ask that question. Will there be evidence, Jared? So, so good that's question. That's a very important um, question. Yeah, so, so ceremonially, Senator Leahy gets to decide those questions, right? Yeah, He's right. the presiding officer, so if, you know, the, they want to subpoena uh, Rudy, uh, they, they, that would be up to Senator Leahy right. ceremonially. The reality is any decision about a procedure, evidence, what evidence should come in, who should be subpoenaed, uh, can be, and generally will be decided by a simple majority vote in the Senate. Uh, so even if Senator Leahy said, yes, we should subpoena Rudolph, uh, the Senate could vote that down with a simple majority uh, or vice versa. But, but can I say just one thing about that? That's a key point. If they do a trial with no evidence, it is not going to be believed by anybody. 
unless there's evidence produced on both sides, people are going to dismiss it as a star chamber, including me. There has to be evidence like in any other trial. But in, in the first impeachment, there, there were no witnesses called. I know. And they, and they just I voted, I believe. But I think they met, <clears throat> each side made its case. In other words, they presented their case. Right. But, right. Evidence. What you're talking about, Sandy, is calling witnesses. And no, 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 no. I'm not. I'm talking about evidence can also be documents. Wow. Evidence is documents. Evidence is uh, counts. I mean, in a normal trial, you get to introduce all kinds of evidence, not just witnesses. But I would hope there would be witnesses. Well, Lindsey, Lindsey Graham has threatened that if they call witnesses, he's going to make a, a mockery out of the trial by calling all kinds of FBI agents and so on, some vague threat that he's made. Well, yeah. Well, so, and so here's the thing. This is the difference between, yeah. th this is the key difference between a criminal trial and an yeah. impeachment. Right. Exactly. L Lindsey Graham or whoever can say they're going to do that. But, you know, my guess is if Lindsey Graham starts doing that, who controls the Senate right now? Uh, uh, the Democrats do, and all they need is a simple majority vote, and he can't do that. Right. Uh, so, so, you know, I, I don't know whether they'll pay, bring in evidence or not. Um, right. Some people say, well, why do we need evidence? Most half the senators witnessed this in person, or you know, all of them witnessed this in person in some, yeah, in some well. capacity. Um, uh, others, others say, yeah, we, we need evidence. We need to have testimony. Um, so, uh, but in the end, all of those decisions, even though Leahy has sort of the ceremonial authority, if they're controversial, you better believe it will be a fit, it'll be based on a, a vote in the Senate, and and it's just a simple majority. So they'll need they, they need fifty one. Uh, to, to go one way or the other. So, so the Senate could override a judgment from from the presiding officer. Yes. Yep. Huh. Yep. Yeah, that's why it's sort of. I mean, it's not ceremonial. I don't want to belittle it because I mean, I think it is pretty, pretty, pretty interesting to have, you know, our little state, uh, the par Senate parliamentarian and the presiding officer coming from coming from Vermont. But, but yeah, the, those decisions, if they're controversial, it'll. They'll, they'll vote on them. How does how does Leahy vote as, as a senator? He votes as a senator. So yeah. he has a constitutional right, right to vote, right. even so though he is the presiding officer. Yes. To step down from presiding officer when he votes. I don't know that he actually even has to do that, but, but right. he may. I mean, basically, Tim, I don't think there are that many rules. That's what Jared's saying. This is really a political trial without real rules. Of the course. rules are set, as he said, by the majority, however they rule. I mean, in a criminal case, it would be unheard of. You would never have a decision in a criminal case to have no evidence, right? Uh, I can't imagine. You, you, I don't you know how you prove your case. But this is a political case, right? Yeah, and, and then if you look back at history and the founders and the Federalist Papers uh, and the history of where the impeachment process came from, from England, um, that was the intent uh, and has always been the intent because it's not viewed as a crime. It's viewed as a crime against the public good. Right. Uh, and, and, and so that that's why it's it's very different. Um, and really, it's it's a it's purely purely uh, uh, going to come down to the political well, votes. Going back to the fourth Fourteenth Amendment, the Democrats apparently are abandoning their plan to get him precluded from holding office again through the 14th Amendment, it just hasn't flown because you have to prove that you rose against the, mm -hmm. the government, that there was an insurrection. And uh, so if he's not convicted in the uh, Senate trial, then there's no way to enforce the 14th Amendment because in essence, he's been declared not guilty of right. insurrection. Right. Yeah. So I think in that case, if I mean, I, I, have, I hadn't seen that, but if, in that case, if they're not making that argument, it would seem they would need to have a second vote if they want to disqualify him. But the interesting thing, I think, about the 14th Amendment, it is just takes a majority to declare that you right. have risen up. And right. so... Right, right. So I mean, that's a whole, that's another, I mean, theoretically, that, that could be a, a whole nother process, even. I mean, they can do, that's a standalone provision. It doesn't have to be yeah. part of an impeachment. Correct. Um, you know, and so okay, I, interesting, I, I, interesting, interesting piece. Anyone else have a question? Because I think what somebody said, maybe what Susan said, I think that this is really key as 
if you recognize, as we all do, that this is a political trial, to me, it reveals more about the state of probably both parties. But I would like Jared to comment about what the impeachment says about both parties, basically. I mean, particularly, it shows to me that the Republican Party is deeply split, number one. Yeah, I think it certainly shows that. Um, uh, that the, I mean, uh, yes. And I don't think there's any secret to that. And I mean, you see right. what, what the, in the House, um, this sort of schism and, and who should be punished and who shouldn't be between this uh, QAnon Marjorie Green uh, representative and, and Liz Cheney, who's sort of, you know, the Dick Cheney neocon, old right. school Republican in that, in that sense versus, you know, this woman Marjorie Green who says 9-11 was a hoax and that, you know, the Parkland shootings were false flags. Um, and so, uh, and, and and President Trump seems to be more in that Marjorie Green camp. I don't think seems, you know, he, 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 they, they, he is. And so I think that's the schism going on there. And I think that's what we'll see happen with the vote in the Senate. Um, what happened in the vote in the House today? The House was going to adjudicate whether Green should be removed from her um, committees. 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 Yeah, I'm not. I did see I that they were going to do that. I didn't see if there was a result yet. I don't think so. I just heard the news that there hadn't been a result yet. Okay. Right. I mean, I, I think this. So here, here's my sort of take. I think the 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 right loves to talk about cancel culture, uh, and I think both sides are guilty of this cancel culture. Yeah, me too. And, and here's why. Um, you, you see, so the Florida rep Matt Getz. Uh, you know, going to Wyoming where Liz Cheney is and, you know, saying she's not a Republican, that she should be kicked off her committees. I mean, that's just as much cancel culture in my mind as it is the Dem saying Marjorie Green, who was elected by her constituents, shouldn't be on a committee because of these things, these things she said. So, if you, I mean, you, you want me to comment, Sandy? I mean, I think, you know, right now I'm very down on all political parties and I, and there's this, and I teach First Amendment law, which is one of the rights of the First Amendment is the freedom of association, which is what protects the ability of parties to associate with each other. Um, but I, I really do feel like things have become so tribal and people automatically say, because you're in the other party, I must disagree with you. Uh, and it's sort of a shortcut for us all, uh, as opposed to really thinking and talking about the issues. Uh, we just say, well, I must not agree with that person. And we're sort of pre-programmed. It's, it's just very tribal. and and and. Uh, I'm not sure in my mind that that helps society uh, in, in any great way. So I'm sort of on a, if we could figure out a constitutional way to ban all parties, I might be into it. They tried to early on. That's what uh, Washington wanted. They didn't want factions yeah. or, or parties yeah. at all. Um, good idea. Anyway, I mean, but yeah. I wanted to make another comment though on the state of the Republican party. It does seem though that there's a huge split between the top of the Republican party the elites like Romney and that mm -hmm. bunch and sort of the grassroots Republican party and the grassroots Republican party has a great deal of support among white working class and unemployed people. And I think that's what they're afraid of. And the Democrats don't want Trump to be able to hold office again because they know that he would appeal to that class of people again. And then he yeah. very well might be elected again. So they, they, on the other hand, want him to be not only convicted, but sentenced in a way never to run again, because they're, mm -hmm. they're afraid to death of him in a way. They're yeah. afraid that he'll win again. Yeah, I mean, it could, could be. I did see some, I think it was that same, I mean, in polling is what it is. I mean, I don't put too much faith in polling, but I did see a poll today that indicated that even in Republicans, President Trump's uh, approval has plummeted since he left office. Um, so I'm not sure how, 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 uh, you know, successfully be. And I think if you look sort of ob objectively, uh, I think the, the both the Democrats certainly are fearful. I'm not sure if it's actually all that well grounded because look where we, when President Trump came in, it was Republican president, uh, Republican House, I believe, and Republican Senate. When he left, oh, it's it? the complete opposite. So I'm not sure he actually has quite as much clout, but I do agree that there's an interesting shift going on because traditionally you think of the Democrats as being you know, the, 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 the working class, uh, you know, Michigan car workers, um, uh, that being their constituency. And I think, you know, San Sandy, you're right. And I think the polling does play this out, that there seems to be 
um, a move away from them. And Trump picked up a lot of those voters, uh, both in 2016 and in, and in 2020. Um, so, you know, it's always interesting to me, not, not do I, only do I hate parties at this point in my life, but I also, it's also always interesting to see how they, uh, you know, change over time. I mean, right, Lincoln was a Republican. Um, uh, and that's a very different radical, Republican party today. You got to remember that at that time, the Republicans were the radical party. They were anti-slave. Right. Well, right. I know, that's what I mean. It's they just were, very interesting to see how they shift and point. sort of, yeah. Yeah, you right. know, uh, the Democrats were this party of slavery. Exactly. Uh, you know, and um, so I don't know where I was going with that, but. <laughs> but I wanted to just say one other thing. Oh, I'm sorry, Jane, go ahead, Jane. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to ask, so so let's ask whether, so he, even, he, he can't, if he, if he, <laughs> even though he was impeached, um, he, he can't be tried as a public, he, he can't be tried as a private citizen if the, if the, if the, if the Senate refuses, if, if the Senate refuses, refuses to convict him, I mean, to, 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 him, to impeach him, he can't be tried as a public citizen. If he committed citizen. a crime, he could. Yeah. Yeah. And, and now, and, and, and so, and so could he, I mean, what, what could he, could he be prosecuted? Could someone prosecute him in court for inside for 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 inciting a riot as yeah. a, as a private? So there's two good good question. There's two federal laws. I mean, there's many federal laws. The two that sort of jump out to me. There's one law that's this incitement uh, to commit a crime of violence, and that's a federal criminal law that carries you know 10 year sentence uh, if you can prove that somebody incited someone else to commit a crime of violence. Uh, and then there's um, the uh, incitement to commit insurrection uh, as well uh, that that I think is floating out there. Um, I mean, all of these are hard uh, crimes to convict under uh, because of the nature of them. And and I think from a First Amendment perspective, I think that's actually a good thing uh, because it's a very slippery slope to go down. Uh, of criminalizing speech. Um, there is some speech that can be criminalized and, and this may very well be it, but it's always something that gives me pause. Uh, uh, even though, as I said, I mean, I, I, would, I cried that day. Maybe others did too, uh, watching that. Uh, I've just never felt that sort of emotion. Um, although I did shed a tear when Garth Brooks sang at the inauguration too of him. Um, um, country music fans. So. There's, there's also the idea uh, that the federal prosecutor in Georgia might um, try to uh, uh, indict him for election fraud, for voter tampering with his yeah. phone, phone call to Raffensperger, the, the yeah. general. So that yep. is floating out there as well. Yeah. I mean, I, there's a, I, I, I would not be surprised if we see some uh, some charges in, in these different places because it's been you know it's been happening all over the place um but the but the the you know again this i've mentioned al capone before i mean that's the difficulty with, with getting people on these sorts of things you know um right trump didn't say let's go break into the capitol he implied it i think pretty clearly that people should go do some damage uh but he he didn't say that and so it, it becomes a well, what's inside his head, and that's always a hard, a hard hurdle to get over. Um, he, he called his vice president a coward. Yeah, yeah. During during the the uprising, he said Mike, Mike Pence did not have the courage to do yeah. what he could have done. Yeah, that's and I think yeah. the Democrats will present that kind of evidence, and they'll play it on the big screen, you know, to the, the American public. Right. And, and, he, and I think the other point, sort of to your point, Tim, he, he didn't, uh, I mean, it took many hours for him to come out and record that ridiculous video. And, and um, he, he was unhappy yeah. that his people weren't more, um, they, were, they were dressed funny, he said. The people who right, were right. attacking it, he, said he wasn't very happy about that. They like the guy with the horns. <laughs> he said. What? <laughs> So they funny because it, because the working class people, white people, seem to don't care about that stuff. They seem to really support him. <laughs> That's what the Democrats are so worried about. That's what I think is going on. That's why I think they are going after him. Actually, is so that he'll never be able to run again. That's 
the, that's the political aim of what they're doing. That's well, why that's I, the only Jared punishment they could meet out. Parties. What? What? What, Jerry? So that, that's the only punishment they could meet out at this yeah. point. Right. right. He obviously right. can't be removed. Yeah, right. Exactly. There is a, if he had been convicted before he left office, he would have been, uh, he wouldn't have been able to collect his federal benefits. He wouldn't have, had, there's a, four presidents get a million bucks a year for staff. Yeah. Uh, they get obviously security, uh, secret <laughs> service and a bunch of other stuff. Um, but, but no, but he did. Brave, he, you guys. It, it wouldn't apply because uh, he wasn't convicted while he was in office and the federal statute says you lose benefits uh, 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 if you um, uh, are removed from office via impeachment, and that didn't happen. So he's getting, no matter what happens, he's still getting his million bucks a year plus. I can't stand it. Yeah. I hate it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> now, what about his um, intimate trying to intimidate a, 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 um, the, 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 the the officials in Georgia and Georgia to violate the, to violate their their all their oaths of their oaths of office? I mean, in terms of trying to. And harassment, intimidation, or there, mm. there, there's um, <clears throat> pu 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 pushing, pu pushing, pushing someone, pushing, pushing someone to commit a crime. Yeah. Is... Yeah, yeah, and that's. I think Tim was mentioning that, um, but but yeah, and that's actually part of the articles of impeachment. They do reference those calls to the Secretary of State in Georgia, um, in the impeachment articles, but. Again, right. So yeah, this, the, the U.S. attorney uh, or perhaps even the state's uh, attorney general in Georgia, uh, they may very well be looking at criminal charges for that. And, and, and now that he's no longer the president, um, I mean, I'm sure they'd make arguments that he you know, couldn't be tried for things that he did while in office. But I, I don't see any reason why if they decided to move forward, they couldn't and a jury would decide. But I, but I think that there's really a difference, Jane, in, in trying somebody for a crime or trying uh -huh. somebody for impeachment. If you're going to charge him with the crime of, uh, I don't know what the crime would be with the Secretary of State of Georgia. I'm not certain what that crime would be. But if it's a crime, it would go to the state's attorney in that county. They would charge him. <laughs> And then Trump would have the right to a jury trial with all sorts of protections as a criminal defendant. Right. None of which exists. In not, none, of, none of that occurs with an impeachment trial. None of it. Because it's, as everybody has said, political. Mm -hmm. hmm. So, but, so, so pushing. So harassment, I mean, harassing, harassing, spe harassing speech is, prote can, is protected speech. So, so there's, yes. yeah, there's a First Amendment doctrine on, on that. Um, mm -hmm. And so what the Supreme Court in a case called uh, Elanis, it was a Facebook case uh, where this guy, the former husband, uh, well, ex-husband, uh, was po posting really horrible things to his ex-wife on her Facebook page. Um, and they they um, they said he was he was uh, they were called true threats. They said he violated a state law that said that you can't threaten somebody. Um, mm -hmm. And he was making these harassing threats on the Facebook page of hers. And he claimed that he was a, a burgeoning rapper, and that since other rappers talk about this, it was protected speech, even though it was on her Facebook page. Supreme Court ultimately said uh, that even threatening speech is protected unless the prosecutor can show that the individual making the speech subjectively intended uh, the person to feel in fear of bodily harm. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and they said in that case, he didn't, he, they, they couldn't prove that he actually wanted her to be in fear of bodily harm. And so he wasn't, his conviction was overturned. Okay. You know, but now- I we can certainly debate whether that's good or bad, but that is what the law, the law says. That's the law with phone calls too, by the way. It's the same thing. I, what I tell clients that I threatened and abused verbally by their partners on the phone mm -hmm. is one, hang up. Yeah. You're, you know, that's it. Right. And you, I think maybe folks, I mean, this, this came up in Burlington a few years ago where someone had put, um, I forget what, little flyers, uh, yeah. actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, saying, you know, come to a white supremacy meeting. They did it specifically in uh, two, I think, African-American women's yeah. homes. 
A student uh, of ours, Jared. Yeah. Oh, was a student of ours that did it? Yes. No, a student of ours who got the flyer. Victim. Oh, a student of ours got one of the flyers. Yeah. 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 Um, and so this issue, I mean, this 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 crops up from time to time, and um, they're difficult issues to deal with. Right. So. Including, I think, the Kaya Morris case, the Bennington Black right. legislator who right. ultimately left the state house. I think over it. She was harassed in that way. I think. Right. I can't remember the exact facts of that one, but yeah. Yeah. Right. So what are you, anyway, so as Jared said, this is a political trial, correct? So what do you think are going to be the political ramifications? What if he gets off? Uh, Sandy, what you if he gets off, what's the political ramifications of that? Yeah. I don't think there, I just, I don't, I think, um, well, it'll certainly be used in the, in the, in the elections, the Democratic right. Party will use it in the elections to, to motivate their base. Right. Uh, and I think the Republicans are going to do the exact same thing, uh, it, it, you know, as well uh, in, in their campaigns, uh, if he's right. convicted or, or not. Um, so it becomes political fodder, I guess. Um, Kim, you were going to say something. Yeah, Sandy, I was going to be very sad and say it's not a question of if, it's a question of when he is not convicted. <laughs> Could be. Could he be. is not going to be convicted. I'll bet you 50 cents. Well, we could make a wager, but then I don't understand exactly if it's true. And if, and if you seem to know that, which you're a very well informed person and so <laughs> forth, so I respect that. However, then why did the Democrats do it? Does this wow, make Tim sense? Sandy's look? never said that to me. <laughs> I have too. Are you yeah, I'm just freaking kidding. serious? Um, <laughs> look at, no, I mean that though, Tim. If he gets off, if everybody really thinks that, which I guess most people, I'm not certain of that, but it's, say most people think that didn't, what does that make the Democrats look like then? If they're gonna go th do this and he is acquitted. Well, but the Democrats is like damned if they do, damned if they don't. I don't know that. Well, I guess that's what you think. Okay, think, go ahead, tell me yeah. more. I think that they, they have to follow their conscience that here it's someone not, not get away with this type of uh, behavior. behavior. And so that's where they're stuck. Now, whether they could have found another way to do it than impeachment, it was so close to the end that it does make it, it seems kind of uh, a waste of time. Yeah. But I think the point was made. What Ruth, do you think? Ruth Marcus in the Times today had a good column saying the, uh, the Senate trial is not a waste of time, even, even though she concedes that he will most likely not be convicted. So Then why? Why is it not a waste of time? Because it presents to the, the historical record the, the high crimes and misdemeanors that he did perpetrate. It's yeah. there in the historical record, and it was important for it to get be there. If there had been no impeachment, it would have been swept under the rug. And there was an impeachment. What I'm talking about is the trial right. itself. If there's no conviction, in, in a way. She, and she's saying that- She's the, saying still that it's worth it. That it's worth it to do it. Yeah, I mean, I think certainly uh, for, for, you know, and I would include myself in this, but uh, certainly for, for, for folks that, um, you know, think the president committed impeachable offenses, uh, the fact that he will go down in history as the only president thus far to be impeached twice. I mean, I do think to the extent kids study civics anymore, uh, that will be uh, something that people remember, uh, if nothing else about President Trump. Uh, you know, so to that extent, um, you know, I think you're right. There, there, there very well could be value to it. Okay. What else? Anybody else have anything else to say? Closing remarks? Guess I rest not. my case. Well, but you got a haircut, Jared, right? <laughs> I did get a haircut. Yeah, yeah, no, it was time. I finally went into a barber, triple masked and wrapped in plastic wrap. <laughs> right. uh, no, it was, it was quite, quite a nice experience. It was nice to, nice to, nice to do. I, I just, uh, I was secretly, I, I don't, I, I was secretly, I've been doing a lot of like media interviews about all this stuff over the past couple of weeks. And I, I secretly had a ponytail uh, that none of them knew about because I could stand in Zoom and you couldn't see it. Or if it was like an in-person interview, you can't really hide a ponytail. <laughs> it was long enough to pull it back, so it just looked like normal hair, but it was really a ponytail. <laughs>
kind of fun. Yeah. Um, in, in closing, though, I might mention, again, the distinction in my mind is really an important one to make, that this is not a criminal trial. He doesn't, Trump does not have as many rights as he would have if this, if he had been charged with a crime. This is political, and it's going to de just depend on the majority of votes in the Senate. And it doesn't, in my mind, it doesn't really mean a whole lot except politics. You know, that's, and so I don't know. How, in my mind, I think it's going to make him popular with his base. Yeah, yeah, that's not true. And I don't know. That's the downside. I, I'm not certain that the Democrats really should have. I don't, I guess I won't comment on what my opinion is about why they did it. They did it so that they could prevent him from ever running again. That, that is really, I think, why they did it. But why they'll do it. That's worthwhile, though. What? That in and of itself. Well, if that you think, so, if you think so, that's fine. If you think so, that's fine. Of course. But it's not everybody's thought, you know. Of it's course. Not, it's not a universal opinion. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, anybody else have anything? So next week we are presenting, what is next week? What date is it next week? Next this week must be the 10th. February something or other. On the 10th. Mm -hmm. So we will have a session next week from the Sister City program of Burlington, from the Burlington Bethlehem Arad Sister City program. And our guest leader of that discussion will be Musa Isak, who is the president of the Burlington Bethlehem Arad Sister City program, just to talk about what he thinks is gonna happen in Israel, Palestine with our new president, Joe Biden. And if there are gonna be changes, if they're gonna be, if the things will stay the same, but that is always a hot button issue. And so it will be an interesting session from Musa. Okay, so maybe we'll see you next week. Certainly hope so. Thank you, Jared. Thank Thanks, you everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.